We're back with the sports rabbi, Josh Halleckman. How are you doing? All right, doing well. What's going on? All good. My first time recording from Amkina. Back for a second year. Army training. Let's do this. Now we're going to talk about the Israeli Olympics. Just, uh, just ended. What do you have to say? If you could brief in one minute the history of Israel's Olympic, Israel's Olympics, <laughs> what would so, you say? All right. Israel at the Olympics in one minute. Uh, definitely challenging because that's a subject that we, we could spend days on, actually. Because the, even though we have not won so many medals, this year winning four medals was huge uh, compared to the, uh, you know, the medals that we had won beforehand. Uh, Israel has a deep history in the Olympic Games. First started in 1952. Uh, they did not have a chance to compete in 1948 once the uh, state of Israel was uh, was founded. Just wasn't enough time to get people rolling into the competition. 1952 Helsinki was the first time that the Olympic Games took place with Israel being a part of it. Of course, uh, medals were only won beginning in 1992. But before that, of course, 1972 was the big tragedy at the Munich Olympics where 11 Israelis uh, were murdered by uh, by PLO terrorists, by Arab terrorists, uh, the Munich Games, which was a huge tragedy. Um, you know, that, that in itself was uh, something that hung over the Olympic Games for years and years and years. This year, finally, in the year 2021, which should have been 2020, uh, but because of the pandemic was pushed off a year, they, these 11 athletes, Israeli athletes who were murdered, uh, were actually recognized and memorialized at the opening ceremony, something that the Israel Olympic Committee and the widows of a number of them, including Anki Spitzer and Ilana Romano, had wanted to do for years and years and years. Thomas Bach finally allowed that uh, to happen, which was, uh, you know, wonderful. I think there was a closing of the circle and that, you know, once you do it once, hopefully we'll see that going forward. But the 72 games I would be the, the big Israel moment, the positive Israel moment, of course, was 1992 when El Arad won a silver medal in judo. That same game, Oren Smaja won a bronze medal. A lot of people forget about Oren Smaja because he was really the second person to win a medal. Everybody remembers El Arad being the first medalist. And from there, we've had a number of medalists. The first gold medalist, Gal Friedman in 2004 in men's windsurfing. Uh, the Athens Games uh, was a big accomplishment. Uh, we won a number of medals in judo in 2016. Ori Sasson and Yardin Jerby won as well. There were a number of other medalists. Uh, uh, Gal Friedman had won a, another medal in the 1996 Games, also windsurfing. Uh, Shahar Tsubari had won in the windsurfing as well, a bronze medal. Um, so there were a number of medals, but this year, of course, with four medals, two golds and two bronze, uh, obviously a huge accomplishment for the state of Israel and one that we can be very proud of. Thank you. That was a good briefing. <laughs> so yeah, so we won, Israel won a total of 10 medals, right? Throughout uh, its history. It was a total of 10 before no, this year. No, uh, I believe nine medals uh, before this nine. year. Nine. So yeah, it's like crazy that like in all these years, nine total, 2020 or 2021, <laughs> four in one, one year. That's like, that's the big accomplishment. Yeah, no, for sure. Definitely a uh, huge accomplishment. And to be able to win four medals in, in one Olympic Games for Israel was huge. But you know what? The uh, expectations were that they were going to come home with medals. Uh, it wasn't that they were going into this, uh, this blind, in essence. Uh, a lot of people figured that Israel was going to capture a number of medals. There were some surprise medals. Uh, Lino Ashram was not a surprise, uh, winning the gold medal in the women's rhythmic uh, all-around um, rhythmic gymnastics. She came in as the world number one. It was going to be a challenge for her to defeat the Avarina twins uh, from Russia, the Russian Olympic Committee, which is kind of farcical also, the fact that the Russian athletes were really banned and they couldn't stand under their flag, but they stood under the Russian Olympic Committee flag, which was their colors anyways. But we won't go into that whole thing. They weren't happy that uh, with the judges scoring, uh, Leonor Ashram wins the gold medal over there. That was kind of expected that she was going to win a medal. Uh, Artem Dogopiat uh, winning a gold in artistic gymnastics in the floor exercise. Uh, he had a very good chance going into the games to win a medal. He performed flawlessly in the uh, 
the qualification man he was a cool calm collected quiet assassin i'd like to call him i mean he's just like doesn't like the attention just goes out there does what he has to do and he's just like gets it done and and he seemed like that kind of guy yeah i mean that's him uh doesn't show a lot of emotion and you know he's he's great at what he does uh now judo we ended up winning a mixed team judo bronze medal so a number of people actually won that bronze medal it's counted as one but in reality, we actually really failed in the individual judo. Uh, that was where there was a lot of big hopes that we were going to win a number of medals. Sagi Muki coming in as the reigning world champion in uh, minus 81 kilogram category. You also had Peter Palchek, you had Ori Sasone, the bronze medalist from the Rio games. So there was definitely a, a, a thought that Israel was going to win maybe multiple medals in judo. They didn't happen. They pulled it together with one of the biggest comebacks uh, that I called it. Uh, being able to win that team medal because mentally they were done. They had been destroyed in the Israeli media. Uh, one of the big members of the Israeli Olympic Committee, Yael Arad, who holds a very big state uh, statement, uh, when any, anytime she says something, it's being Israel's first medalist, especially in judo, she basically said that, uh, you know, they, they had failed. Uh, when you come out and say that a day before uh, your team judo is going to commit doesn't leave a very good you know reaction on those people there was a lot of criticism levy and Ord smaja who's one of the coaches of the teams the, the men's coach uh, came out against the el Arad. so there was a lot of nastiness going on so for them to be able to pull it off winning a bronze medal in the mixed uh, team was was a real big accomplishment avishar semberg really set the tone first day of the competition winning a bronze medal in taekwondo Nobody really knew who she was going into the games. We had heard, okay, there's this, you know, there's a chance of this uh, young uh, woman that may be able to win a, a medal in Taekwondo. And you know, but nobody really paid any attention to her. Uh, even, even though there was a chance that she was going to win a medal and she was in the finals, uh, to put it, give you an idea of the sports channel, which sent dozens of people to Japan to cover the games, did not even bother sending a live play-by-play -play team to the Taekwondo tournament. Uh, they had a reporter there, a field reporter, and that was it. Now that, you know, nobody really expected her to win. Meanwhile, the judo, they had live play-by-play -play going. Every individual, every disaster that went through, um, you know, was one after the next after the next. They had people covering there as well. So, you know, definitely successful games from that. But it wasn't just the medals, Ozzy. It was also the accomplishments of making so many finals, whether it was Anastasia Gorbenko making it to a couple of swimming finals. We'd never really done that before. Uh, Hannah Minenko, a third time in a final of the Olympic Games in the triple jump. Uh, we were threats to win in track and field events, uh, especially the, uh, the marathon. That didn't, come, that didn't come to pass when uh, Lona, Lona Shimtai Sal Peter had cramps and had to really kind of slow down at the 38th kilometer mark when she was winning the race, actually. Um, we had you know, we had just a lot of great stories. If it was uh, Salam Oweet Teferi, who made it to the final of 5,000 meters, was a threat in the 10,000 meters. Her husband uh, finished in 13th place in the marathon as well. Israel uh, competing in baseball. We made it to a final in equestrian. Uh, it's going to be a tough road going forward because the, the bar and expectations now have been raised. Uh, going into 2024 in Paris, there's going to be a lot of thought, well, who's going to win the medals there? Well, Lino Ashram probably will compete again. And we'll have a very good chance to win a medal. Artem Dogopiat will compete in not only the floor exercise, but will also expand his horizon. So he may be challenging for two or three medals. Uh, judo is still going to be there as a threat. Uh, baseball and equestrian are really the big questions if we'll ever have a chance to win a medal. And those, uh, no baseball. What are your thoughts on the baseball? Uh, the, my general thoughts about the baseball, it was a great accomplishment to make it to the Olympic Games. They finished fifth uh, ahead of Mexico. It's a great accomplishment for them. Uh, they needed pitching. They didn't have pitching. The pitching takes, you're going to go as far as your pitching is going to take them. That was the big concern going to the tournament. That was the concern of the World Baseball Classic. Will it make a difference in the Israeli youth? I have my doubts. Uh, we've been hearing for years how Israel baseball is going to grow. I I'm still waiting to see the numbers actually grow. Yes, it was great to have a couple of Israeli-born players on the team. Uh, that was an accomplishment in itself. Will it make an impact on Israeli youth? Uh, really, the I, I have my I have my sincere doubts about that. 
uh, unless there's some serious money being put in. Fields are built. I, I still have a big question as to why the fields that have the uh, land have been broken near Ranana and Beit Shemesh have not been built. Uh, you know, anytime I ask, there's questions about local authorities, building permits, this, that. Uh, you know, if you're serious about a sport, and again, this is not just for the Israel Association of Baseball, but also the Olympic Committee and the local authorities and build the fields. I mean, yeah, you need to have- So let me ask you this. Where do you think Israel's going, net, like Israel's growth from last Olympics to this one, do you think there's gonna be the same growth to the next one or more? I would, I would be surprised if there's gonna be growth onto the next games. Again, winning four medals was a huge accomplishment for a country that sent 89 or 90 uh, competitors, uh, but we sent quality competitors, uh, people that uh, have a chance, that had a chance to win. Um, and that's really important. I think that there were some lessons learned throughout this games. I think that we should be, you know, I, I said before the games, you know, an accomplishment would be two to three medals but it is possible that Israel could win four to six medals. We could walk away with half a dozen medals in these games. And, and we almost did, uh, you know, being- So moving being, forward, there's, there's high there, expectations. Well, there are high expectations. And I stated that uh, Gorbenko is only 17 years old and she's making it into swimming finals. Well, yeah, I mean, she's going to be, you know, as a, a 19 year old, 20 year old, she's going to be stronger. She's going to be bigger. She's going to be faster. She's going to have more experience under her belt coming from the youth, uh, youth side. Yeah, I mean, she's going to have a chance. Luna Ashram's only 22 years old right now. She'll be 25 at the next games. There's younger, uh, Nicole Zellickman is only 20. Uh, she made it into the finals of the Rhythmic Gymnastics. Golpiat may walk away with a number of medals. But again, uh, you know, we're, we're Israel. We can't set our bar too high. Uh, we can't set our bar too high. We can't have too many expectations. But yeah, the, you know, those are going to be the expectations and anything. It sounds like that. things are looking good. Things are looking good. I mean, you know, when you win a medal on the first day of competition, then the expectations went from here to like sky high, because then you're going to the first week when you have all the individual judo and you think, well, we have a chance to win. We have three legitimate medal chances. And the funny thing is the people that made it into the bronze medal matches in judo were not even the two that were supposed to. Shira Roshone and Baruch Shmailov. They, they were not even considered to, you know, to be threats to, to, to score a medal. And they were in the final of the uh, bronze medal matches. So, uh, yeah, uh, you know, Israel always likes to try to go above and beyond. And that's what's going to happen in the 2024 Paris Games for sure. If you could choose, you know, your top three athletes and give a little, um, you know, background on them, who would they be and why? Three athletes from this Olympics. Uh, listen, yeah. Illinois Ashram has to be, you know, the achievement wise to be able to top the podium on pretty much the, the final second to last day of the competition, knowing that she had to wait around for a couple of weeks for these games while other competitors were going on is huge. The fact that she was able to break the stranglehold on the Russian, uh, the Russians have won the rhythmic gymnastics for what it seems to be 30 years or you know, 20 something years. Uh, to be able to break that stranglehold and, uh, you know, being able to score as well as she did, it was massive. Um, you know, that's a great story. Uh, even though she was the number one ranked woman going in, you still have to perform. And it's kind of misleading that number one rank because there hadn't been that many competitions since, uh, since COVID started. Yes, there were a number, but some people did compete. Some people didn't compete. The RF Arena Twins did. They didn't. So again, that's number one. Number two, Artem Dogopiat, to be able to, uh, to perform as well as he did in the qualifying, almost a near perfect score in the qualifying. Then he had to wait a week. He had to wait one full week and a day until he did the final. Now, to be able to sit there and wow. wait is very difficult. Uh, you know, he originally <laughs> comes from the Ukraine, uh, made Aliyah many, many years ago with his family. His real, he's really a product of Israel, grew up watching the Israeli uh, artistic gymnastics, Alex Shatilov, who uh, one of the greats uh, in Israel competed this year in the Olympics, did not make it to a final, but again, he's 30 something years old. Uh, to be able to still do that at that age is tremendous. That was his role model growing up and to be able to be so cool, calm and collected to win that medal and to walk away with the gold the way he did is a, a modesty uh, it is really amazing. So that would be number two. Uh, number three, uh, I'd have to give it to I'd have to give it to the, the team, the, the judo team, for being able to 
pull it together after a brutal week. I mean, literally, they, you know, it was one loss after the next, one disappointment after the next, one cr uh, critic after the next going after them in the media, including myself. I mean, we all, you know, they were supposed to go in there and that were, that's where the chances were to win medals. The real, real chances, people said, judo is going to be the place where you have a chance to win multiple medals as we did last games. We won two bronze medals last games, both in, one in men, one in women. To be able to then pull it together in the final uh, was really something else. I mean, again, they were, they, they mentally, they were broken. They almost lost in their opening uh, matches in the team event. They needed a 20, 20 year old rookie, Olympic rookie, Gilly Sharir, to be able to pull them out of the fire. And she won not only then, but she won numerous uh, event. She won numerous matches in the mixed event. And then Team the Nelson Levy, who is uh, a, par a daughter of Olim, uh, which I think is a great story. She won a number of her matches or bouts and won the, the winning bout to give Israel that bronze medal, which is something really spectacular. So those would be my three. All right. Well, hopefully they'll do good in the future and the upcoming games. Thank you so much for your time. We'll keep this short. No problem. Thanks for having me. All right. Appreciate no it. No problem. My pleasure. Have a great day.